Welcome everybody. Uh, this is Into the Forest I Go. My name is Tom and today I'm talking with Ruslan Glebov, who is an amazing athlete currently living in Sweden, uh, competing at the very highest level in orienteering despite being already 36 years old. So uh, the, the, the age doesn't matter anything for him at least. Uh, he, he's like Daniel Hubman almost, <laughs> indestructible. Not, not Doing really. orienteering for what? What is it? Twenty-five years already? Yeah, Twenty-four. <laughs> Twenty-four years. Uh, amazing stuff. And uh, we're going to be talking today a little bit about uh, his career, and also we will do the second part of today's session. Will be uh, the analysis. I think we will take the middle race for this from this year's World Orienteering Champs. Am I right? Yep. If cool. you want. Yep. Cool. Um, okay, so where do we want to start? We want to start with uh, 2018. You got a silver medal uh, during the World Orienteering Champs, um, only behind Lundanesh, who had an amazing performances during that year, uh, as far as I remember. And um, the, the question that I have is, what allowed you to get to this almost highest level in the world and reach for the second spot uh, during the World Orienteering Champs. You mean exactly that day in Latvia? Um, yes, but also the earlier period, because I, I do suspect that, uh, you know, the, 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 the form that you had to build, uh, the physical uh, training that you had to go through, all had to you know align perfectly and contribute to the end result so it's not just one day but probably at least the the whole season if not several seasons before that mm. yeah yeah it's actually a bit i know it's maybe strange or not but i thought well it's it was quite uh yeah of course you you're not a, i'm not a beginner and i was not the beginner those that day either uh and i already had um I was my first walk was uh, ten years before in Czech, two thousand eight. Mm -hmm. Already, I was twenty one and I got twenty uh, sixth place. I go, I guess, I think so. Uh, anyway, so it was also not that bad either. Absolutely. But, yeah, but of course it's not a medal, and uh, yeah, but of course trainings, trainings through the years. Uh, what was a little bit maybe interesting that I actually I saw in two thousand seventeen I was. I think I was much better prepared, and uh, but still it was really I, my bad performance. Yeah, I just performed really bad at walk, especially middle so distance. You, you mean you were physically better prepared? Physically, and I think also technically. Okay. Uh, but I still prepare. I, I still perform really bad at walk. Mm -hmm. I was, I think, some top twenty at middle distance, uh, and I actually I, I was turning thirty that year. And I had quite then afterwards after the um, uh, after the season I had quite tough mentally uh, autumn so actually I thought maybe to quit and uh, it was not that far actually to doing this but yeah then I just continue and see how it goes but I decide okay maybe like with uh, all big goals like world champs it's uh, gold of world champs it's over now I will just maybe continue a little bit and not focusing at all at anything I mean I will not set any goals mm -hmm. because when you're setting the goals and you you're not getting the goals it's it's a disappointment yes and uh, so yeah and I just continued and uh, it's somehow it's happened that I uh, until that day, I was mainly trained by myself since I was maybe some 19 years old. And uh, I happened, I got um, in uh, touch with um, Hari, uh, Hari Vinanaki. He's, uh, he's a Swede. He's living in Sweden. He's actually a, corm, a former coach of um, Helena Janssen of Helena Bergman. So uh, at least regarding physical shape and all those physical preparations. So he started writing the plans to me. And uh, we changed a little bit of, he asked me actually at the beginning, I was training mostly like all the, all the years, it's maybe two workouts, I mean, fast sessions per week. And he asked, oh, do you want, I, I have two ideas, so you can come this way or this way. And another way I, I choose, it was kind of like uh, six, uh, uh, six workouts or six fast sessions a week or something like this. So oh, that's was, a big, that's a big change, right? From yeah, two to six. Change. Yeah, exactly. It's a bit change and uh, and a little 
little bit form of trainings was a little bit changed, but most of this, uh, yeah, it was like a main change, I would say, for me. So we, we changed to this, and he was writing the plans to me, and uh, some of the trainings was yeah, tough, I would say, even for me, when I was already trained quite well, some was fine as well. Anyway, so the shape was, physical shape was quite good. Um, yeah, and then uh, if we are coming back exactly to that day, uh, to the silver yeah, second place, actually that was quite uh, nothing exceptional. I would say even the first part of the course was quite bad of me. Uh, on the warm up, I drew. We, normally we have some small warm up uh, mm -hmm. before the start, and I drew some small course, maybe some five six controls. And I, I made mistake at every one of those. I missed every every call because at least some 15, 20 meters I just came to this. Oh, it's over there. I came there. Oh, it's over there. It was okay. And those these days I understand it will not go well. So I really need to work. And but it's probably will just go quite bad for me. Anyway, so I started and actually the start was exactly approximately this, not that bad, but still. I miss in the beginning a couple of places and I lost one minute to one of the controls. And so it was nothing really good at the start. But then I, I was actually, I got quite like uh, angry on myself that I did it's quite bad in the beginning. And then I somehow I came to the working, working flow and then I just continue. So uh, yeah, and it's like, it's, it's kind of, it's, um, yeah, to the finish, I came to the second place uh what was two things or maybe one for me just for my own i probably was never that even i, I lost two maybe some two and a half minutes to olaf so he won two and a half minutes it's for long distance it's really it's good enough marginal to say he's stronger not not a problem but still i i lost those two and a half something minutes in the forest so in the best day it was possible for me also to perform close enough to olaf i think but I didn't manage anyway, so in second, I'm not regret. It's how it is. But uh, and uh, I remember that it, it's already we are talking about stuff what happened five years ago. So I already forgot something definitely. Yeah. The um, last part of the course, at least, uh, yeah, maybe some two kilometers. It was almost the same as we ran two days before. It was a relay there, and the course the relay course was around the arena. I would say. And also the long distance, uh, the last part of the court, it was also the same place. So of course it was the same for everyone who mm -hmm. ran the relay. But uh, I, 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 I had quite strong finish at the end. I remember at least, and I, oh, I know this place. I just need to run. I do. Oh, I know this place where I need to run. Actually, the map. So just go there. And it was same for everyone. But at least for me, it was quite helpful. I felt it's quite helpful. I, I think that. This is interesting, but I think that not everybody like remembers forest in the same way. So if you, yeah. some people, for example, you make them run the forest one day and you make them run a similar area of the forest the second day, and uh, they will feel like this is like a brand new forest to them. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you being able to remember a lot of, a lot of the details from their previous day, maybe it's like a little bit unique. Yeah, I would not say that. I, th I don't remember exactly the course of relay, now, but I think actually it was almost not not the same legs, but quite close. Uh -huh. So we ran almost same same way. I would say at least to the finish or somewhere close to the finish. So it was nothing something really new. New. Okay. It, it was not a new part of the forest. I would say no. Okay. Uh, what uh, or what is interesting to me is that you mentioned that okay at, at the beginning you were making some mistakes and it was uh, getting you a little bit frustrated a little bit angry usually usually what happens according to my experience is that this is this is a very bad sign and when you're getting frustrated and angry you start to make even more mistakes yeah. but your performance improved and instead of making more mistakes you started to run better how did you do that yeah, it's uh, what you described. It's uh, I would say happened to me already on the warm up. So I already made those mistakes, and I decided, okay, it will not works out today at all. It will really bad, and it start not that bad. But I lost a couple of minutes in the beginning of the course. Yeah. Then when I lost those minutes, and so well, I have nothing like to lose today. It's I'm ready. I will be hopefully top twenty, maybe top thirty. Have no idea. Anyway, it's not the medals. 
And then I just like shut up, cool, cool down a little bit and just start mostly like I would say physically do the job when it's needed. I take an azimuth, I rotate the compass and I was okay, I need to get here, I need to get here. So it was mostly like a real just, just a job. It was nothing with emotions to do or not pushing really something exceptional hard just because I want to or something, it was work. It was just a work mostly I would say. So somehow I managed to, yeah, to start to do this work properly. That's that. This is very interesting. I've been I've been actually thinking about almost the very same topic even earlier today, and I've been thinking about you know you, you're having those most important starts of the year because every person has goals and for some people it will be world orienting champs for younger runners it will be junior world orienting champs for someone else it might be a world cup race or even a national championship right so we all have those super important starts that we are preparing for for you know either the whole season or at least a big part of the season and then when it comes to this this important race we have this 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 whole bundle of emotions boiling inside us right and i was thinking okay so let's say that we are able to perform and have good races outside of these big big events outside of our most important events how do we like get the, the the performance from other events and put them into the championship event and still perform on a very same high level mm -hmm. uh despite the emotions that are surrounding us and i think that this is one of the most difficult parts of participating in those big events because you know we, we um if, if we are training enough we we know that we are prepared we've been to the terrain or similar terrain several times maybe several training camps and we we know that we can navigate well but now the question is can you navigate also as well when the pressure is high right and uh, I, I was thinking that maybe the solution to this i mean not maybe i think that this is a solution to this but i was like like the question that was in my mind is that, like how to make it a reality, how to convince people or make them do this. But I think that the solution to this is just treat the race as uh, it's like a, you mentioned, it's like a job. It's like a, if, you, if you divide a race into 25 legs because you have 25 controls, basically on each leg, you have to perform a certain set of tasks. And if you do them well enough, this will get you to the finish line with a very good time. And this set of tasks that we need to perform between the first control and the second control, the second control and the third control and so on, they are basically the same, right? Find the best root choice possible, pick, pick the best root choice, find the elements that you need to take off during the root choice, uh, navigate properly using the compass and looking around and identifying the proper features, get from feature to feature to your attack point to the control and then repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat, right? So if you break it down like this, basically orienteering, it's simple. But of course, the, the huge challenge is to like connect everything uh, together, make it work at very high speed, and also put aside the emotions, put aside the, the internal dialogues that we have with ourselves during the race and focus on, on the job itself, right? What do you think mm -hmm. about it? Yeah, that's, that's how that, that sounds really smart, clever. Yeah, no, no nothing. I would say it's something. Yeah, it sounds really good. I think, but it's, I don't know how maybe you uh, can show it or maybe like, like give it to an athlete another, and, and on another like a way or for me, it sounds most like you gave as uh, a solution or this resolving of an issue or problem, like a running the course from start to finish without a mistake for just a particular day or for a particular course when it's like we're talking, okay, we have walk distance, long distance at all champs or middle distance. You have to focus. You have to focus on long, you have to focus on middle. And for me, it sounds like you're saying this, you have to focus just on two courses. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong or, um, or if I, you understand I, what I mean. I, I'm not sure, oh, no, I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. So uh, if you if you think just on the like a focus for two for two courses during the whole year, like only these two courses. I see. No, no, no. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that these two courses have the biggest baggage of emotions coming with them, and they are a little bit different to you know even high quality training sessions that we you might do with your training club. 
uh, because you, you go for the training sessions and you run with the racing pace and um, it works and suddenly you go to a competition where uh, you you know that this is your goal this is what you've been training for for the past 12 months and if that if it doesn't work today you know all the work that you you did for for the last year it's just for nothing right and as you said earlier you get disappointed you you might even consider ending your career like you did right so um, this is what i'm talking about these these most important races they are a tiny bit different than all the other races that you're doing uh, during the year yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. But also, it's uh, then it's not about, as you said, about like bring breaking the course in twenty five pieces. Then it's mostly even about not not about uh, technique. It's mostly about some mental. If you uh... yes, yes, and exactly that, that's what I mean. That if you mentally are are able to put everything aside and 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 tell to yourself, okay, it doesn't matter that this is the most important race. What matters is that I need to do my job. And my job is this, that, that, and that. And if I repeat it 25 times, I will succeed. Mm. That's what I meant. Yeah, 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 of course. But also it's a question or if, if you can do it, if you can take this aside. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, this is extremely difficult, I think. Mm -hmm. Extremely yeah. difficult. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And but and, and what you, what you said, what you said that you know you, you've made some mistakes at the beginning of the course, and then you thought, okay, screw it, I'm I'm probably not fighting for medals anymore. I think it allowed you to put those emotions yeah. that were really, you know driving you uh, and, and pushing you maybe a little bit too much, uh, too too fast. Aside, you were able to put them aside and just focus on the race itself. And uh, that's why you were able to perform during the second part a little bit better than during the first part, because the emotions were not there anymore. Yeah, it's uh, it's possible. It's very difficult to say, even for me, even if we are talking not about, not about that course, but about any other course when we have warm up, it also might be that I need more time to get uh, into routine. Mm -hmm. And uh, in routine on a high pace and like in competition routine, maybe I need instead of just 15 or 10 minutes of warming up on a, with a map, maybe I need to run already one course of five kilometers before I get mm -hmm. in competition mode with my flow in routine. Maybe I need then a little bit more time for warm up. And that happened to me in such case, in this case, it actually was approximate that I got in touch or start working better after some five kilometers of the course already so it's um, yeah it's difficult to say but it's also maybe possible yeah I, I guess it is all right let's move on uh let's move on to 2019 and uh, oringen so this uh, i think that oringen is the biggest competition orienteering competition in the world currently isn't it uh, not maybe in a, like not one day, but it's a multi day. I guess still Yukala maybe it's a bit bigger, like one day event. In terms of the number of participants, yeah, yeah maybe, so. maybe you're right. Yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah. Anyway, it's one of the biggest, yeah. uh, biggest definitely. And uh, I think that I don't remember how it was in the recent years, but I've uh, been to Ring and also like I don't know. Maybe it was like 10 years ago. I don't remember exactly. Uh, but I remember that the uh, prize pool was pretty nice. I think that back then, Thierry Jorjou was still participating and running. And I think he won the Oringen um, when I was there. And I think the first prize was the car. So, you know, a, a, a pretty good prize. No, well, I, I never heard it. No, I don't think so. You never heard it? Hmm. No, no. All right, so maybe uh, maybe I remember wrong. This is possible. Uh, uh, so may maybe maybe some... last last control was on the car, but I don't think that was a price. Okay, yep, That's maybe. But uh, one way or another, I think that Oringen um, attracts very often every year some top level athletes, and it's quite a good competition to test yourself as well, isn't it? Yeah. Cool. Um, did you prepare for Oringen like specifically, or did you treat it like okay, let's let's go to this competition and try to do my best, but my goals are somewhere else, and this is like a test of my performance, test of my physical form at this point in time. Yeah, kind of this. Yeah. So it it wasn't like a big goal to to win the Oringen; it just oh. happened. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember those races for from 2019? Uh, yeah, I do actually quite, uh, 
Yeah, if well, of course, if I try to remember now, I remember already three of those, but I don't remember the first two. Anyway, yeah, actually, I thought maybe to skip ring it was a question. Uh, it was mostly money question, I would say, uh, because those days it was, I think that was Fin five in you in in Finland, uh, like almost just before Oringen, or maybe mm -hmm. some days clashing, and I saw. If I go to Fin Five, I probably have a little bit more chances to win, and uh, of course it's a money question because they the price money there maybe one and a half thousand euros or something, and Fin Five, and the Ringen it's uh, eight thousand euros, but quite uh, stronger field and it's more difficult to win those money. Yeah. So, but some yeah I don't know why I skipped um, uh, Fin Five. I don't remember. I think maybe it's also about logistics and you need to fly to Finland. You need to rent a car. You need to find an apartment um, and this stuff. And uh, that ring in 2019, it was in uh, North Chopin and a friend of mine, he's living there. And we were, actually quite many Ukrainians were staying at uh, his place and driving all together. So it was much easier with this in terms of this stuff. So that's why it was a ring in, I choose ring, ring in, but it was not a goal to win. I actually, I never had like a dream. I don't remember that I had a dream because I knew that Okay, win, to win the ring and it's it's quite tough and it's it's difficult um, because it, first of all, not for me it feels not because of those five days of uh, orienteering how you need to perform really yeah good and strong and run five days, not in terms of physical shape but mostly because the concurrence is really high level of competitors yeah. and the field is really strong so you need to run. Uh, almost those all five days without the mistakes to be yes. really high so it's a challenge. Yes. So, uh, how do you like score the win uh, in Oringen compared to your World Cup me medals? Uh, <laughs> Sorry, World World Oriental Champs medals, not World yeah, Cup. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's a bit different. It's uh, it's like uh, it's difficult. It's a different uh, tower. Tower, I would say. It's Oringen Oriental Champs tower here. It's Oringen tower. It's here somewhere. It's uh, it's a bit different. It's difficult to compare. I don't know. No. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> um, and um, then 2020, I actually didn't check your places, 2020. How, how was your season, 2020? Uh, it was Corona season. Yeah. It was not that many competitions at all, I think. Exactly. I think this is why I'm, I have a gap over here. Yeah. Um, but you have been still training probably, uh, like at yeah. least physically. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. And then 2021, yep. um, you are 34 years old at this point in time, and you go to World Orienting Champs uh, for the uh, 13th time, if I count quickly, correctly. Maybe. And you <laughs> are able to get a medal again during the middle distance, um, placing after um, Kibbutz and Bergman, your mm -hmm. clubmate. With uh, with again very good performance, I think in a, a very interesting terrain. Mm. And as far as I know, this is also the year where you started to work full time and to connect the the full time job with orienteering and training and everything. It mm. must have been pretty tough. Uh, yeah, probably. Well, I managed somehow, <laughs> so it's really, it maybe maybe there is something else. Yeah, actually, I'm not working. Like I'm, I'm employed by seventy five percent, so I kind of work in seventy five. But okay. uh, when I'm in Stockholm, uh, I do live in Stockholm and Sweden. Uh, when I'm in Stockholm, then I work full time, full day, and then I I save the time like for for longer for my trips. So I, I see. save those days, and then I can go for longer summer trips for preparation for world champs, for example. That makes sense. So, yeah. So I was working since, yes, from January, actually, I started at work and uh, I was working maybe until like beginning of June. And then I took one and a half or two months vacation. So, and then I, I was actually last all the months in June, I was in uh, Czech Republic training there. Okay. Yeah. So you were, you were still able to like polish your form, get into the right orienteering flow, make sure that your orienteering skills are on the proper level for world orienteering champs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense because 
Um, I, I was like wondering that if you if you work full time, especially with like uh, because yeah, let, let's let's call it like this. Like the full time job is like um, doing what every other person is doing, working uh, let's say on average eight hours a day, but also taking as many vacation days as a standard person does. So I'm not sure how it is in Sweden. How many vacation days can you take in Sweden normally? Uh, normally it's 25. Okay, so similar to Poland. Uh, I think in Poland it's like 26 after some years of experience uh, or, or, or working full time. Uh, so it's very similar, but I think like for, for an elite athlete, all the uh, training camps that you're doing uh, throughout the year, it's definitely not enough to prepare for the for, for the most important competitions. Do you know how many training camp days per year you have, more or less, on average? No, actually, I have no idea. I never count. No. Okay. Um, well, I, I don't know as well, and I don't think I asked uh, other people about it. Uh, but I remember that when I was training for when I was um, searching for a job, and I was running the Polish junior orienteering team, I, I thought that I need about, I actually, I, I counted that based on the two previous years, that I need about 50, 53 non-working days during the year to be able to attend all the training camps and all the competitions that we have planned in a calendar. So I, I suspect that for the athlete that is uh, training for the world champs is at least something similar and probably uh, some of the athletes are, are doing more if they get the opportunity uh, to do more. Yeah, I'm quite sure actually much more at least elite runners who need, don't need to work. Yes. I'm sure they have much more. I heard some year, maybe I read somewhere a couple of years ago when it was some interview, I guess, with a Danish, Danish coach. They said they are in the camps like one third of the year. And uh, yeah, that was a Danish team. And uh, some of the guys may be on the camps. Like I was, when I was focusing also in 2017, I was first of half year of like of seven months. I was away six months or something, maybe six and a half. So I was at home maybe some I mean, two days a month, three days a month, <laughs> change your clothes, wash them, and then just go away again. So yeah. Yeah. if you have possibility, why not? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so coming back to the race, um, what do you remember about this middle distance? What clicked then? Mm. <laughs> uh, it, it was a little bit kind of exceptional regarding the program. We ran um, qualification in the morning, mm -hmm. and final was in the evening or in the evening. Same anyway, same, same day, day, two courses. Yeah, it's uh, actually a little bit Finnish style. They still allow, they, they still run. Uh, middle distance finish champs this way oh i didn't know yeah yeah they do this yeah uh yeah so i was what i remember i was really like surprised about my performance in the qualification i felt it was technical i felt it uh, uh, i felt it quite slow race for me and still I was, I don't remember exactly, I don't want to lie, but some top five, maybe second or third in my qualification heat. And I thought, well, it's, yeah, I remember I was running quite slow in the forest because it was required for me to uh, to, to, to find all the, to see all the features. Anyway, mm -hmm. all my navigation, what I need to get to the control, it was required for me to slow down. So that was a really big surprise for me. So. Slower in tune, but still I managed to get a quite high position in the in the final, and then we ran the final. And uh, I don't actually remember something exceptional. It's like I have a little bit not a rule, but just keep in mind or uh, just like a know that if you want to get a medal, or if you um, uh, if you not really like a want. But if your if your position should be good enough for a medal, quite often uh, I don't have any statistic. I just I think it's that's how it is. Maybe I completely wrong. But you have to catch a runner who is starting in front of you. At least you need to see him. Or I mean, not to see in form in form of that he will navigate and you just run. I mean that 
uh, you need to catch him just that, okay, you know, you have those two minutes that you know that you are going, going quite fast. So uh, you will definitely will see this runner, pro probably you will see this runner if you will not pass him just in some road charts. Yeah. So I saw Olaf London is quite early in the course. It was some maybe third control already. So, but I was suspecting he he was doing not some some not not the best course on. I think actually he was injured that year. So anyway, I saw him quite early in the course, and then also I caught another runner in the course. Uh, I think it was Nicola Rio from France, but I'm not sure exactly. Anyway, also in the middle of the course because first part until like some nine or twelve control it was quite challenging technically. Anyway, so I saw those guys. It was. A little bit helpful to use them as well because you know they uh, even if Lund, if I caught Olaf he was he had some troubles but he still he was showing a little bit those extra seconds it's always good to use in someone's back uh, but otherwise the course actually I did myself quite well I I mean I didn't run that much uh, behind someone it was mostly my course uh, yeah and then I was a bit like disappointed afterwards uh, it was. Um, a little bit like a longer uh, longer leg was it maybe to 13 or something 14th control it was up and uh, white forest it was possible to see maybe some hundred meters in front and i actually i saw okay it's over there i need to run there and it was just running actually one minute i thought maybe if i could be in a better physical shape it was possible actually to gain more time there and then the approaching the control, uh, just how how you were until you just get to the control, it was maybe also last 200 meters. And we ran on the, one of the maps before and one of the trainings maps. And the, the green, uh, the yellow, between the green areas, it was some sometimes yellow passages. Mm -hmm. It was really bad to run on those because it was really high, uh, high vegetation on this. And it was really, it was even possible to start there and it's yellow and lost more time than if you go around on the green. So, and uh, and that control was actually, before that it was uh, like a yellow and a green. And I said, okay, if I will go on yellow, I will just start there. And I decided to go a little bit around on the green. And actually I lost in that green approximately like 40 seconds, one minute actually. So it was a little bit like set when I was, check my split times afterwards oh yeah i lost there but of course you never know and it was same for everyone but it was a little bit like pity to do yeah to to lose the time there and then uh, yeah then it was a fine end of the course as well so i think matthias he won against me he was maybe some 40 some five five seconds something i i did quite well race no he, he won definitely he was better and 40 seconds it's quite good enough marginal for middle distance and gustav he was seven seconds in front of me that was quite close and uh, yeah. yeah it's it's final so it's a gustav same club teammates uh, it's it's fine it's i also got a medal so that was fine and the guys behind they were actually quite like i would say long it was more than one minute i think to fourth position so uh, yeah but yeah, yeah that was actually quite good uh, middle distance for me same uh, in the trainings before I was there, uh, like as I said, one month uh, on a camp in Czech before training there and before World Champs. And uh, also a couple of the trainings, it was just not, didn't went, did not went well at all. I do remember it was TTE, I think he still was a coach for a Swedish team and he set a couple of courses and one of the most relevant, uh, I think the map name is Malinik, I don't remember. Anyway, he said a couple of courses challenging as always. Mm -hmm. And uh, I ran there and for some like a permanent flex and control some some stripes. And I lost a couple of the courses to, for example, to Albin Riedefeld, like two minutes. And I said, oh, okay, well, yeah, he is in good shape. I'm not there yet, but it's also I'm pushing my I did my best and still I was two minutes behind. And okay, what should I do? Just well, yeah, he's better. I have to continue training. So yeah, but we'll see. Is, on the competition day so but uh, it's not always that that uh, that's easy as, as maybe it seems uh, yeah from from a tv from a result list but uh, yeah um where do i want to go from here i have two questions but there was something else oh yeah i wanted to ask if you have anything special regarding your 
routine during the during the start day? Do you do anything special during the start day, or is it like the the normal um, day and non normal non normal stuff like this standard warm up that you do during all the training sessions, map training sessions, of course. Yeah, I think mostly. I don't think I have any special. Of course, what I do can be really special for you or for anyone else. But I don't think I have any special. At least I don't have any special uh, the World Champs Day compared to any other day. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just yeah, breakfast um, and competitions. You are sitting in quarantine, maybe some four, four, six hours. It depends. And yeah, sometimes you need to eat in quarantine as well. And then you go for warm up. A little bit uh, maybe I learned actually first time I saw it maybe from Thierry. Uh, that if it's possible to get, uh, and what I do try to do to use now, if it's possible to get warm up map uh, and warm up as soon, not the warm up, but if you can go and walk on warm up map as soon as possible, then I try to do it nowadays. So, for instance, if we have a quarantine here, for example, yeah, somewhere in this room. And now it's nine o'clock, it's closed, so I'm not allowed to go anywhere else, just warm up. And I have started two o'clock. Then I will, and I have a map. Then I will just go now for a walk to see a little bit like kind of map. Uh, because quite often in quarantine, you're not allowed to have any maps at all, even if it's like from your home ground. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, sometimes in quarantine, you can get a map only. If you go to a press start, maybe you need to take a, a bus and you're allowed to take this bus only one hour before you start. Mm -hmm. So this kind, but otherwise I try to have a little bit of map experience already as soon as possible. This is maybe something a little bit special, but otherwise I don't think anything else. So. All right. Um, I, I also want to ask about the things that you mentioned about the yellow and the green, uh, because what came to my mind when you were saying this is that you were one of the last starters mm -hmm. so i think you were entitled to think even if i go through the yellow i know that it's going to be worse probably but there is a high probability that there will be a path didn't you think about it yeah actually yeah you're right no i never thought about this maybe because of also yeah in some cases it was it's it can be like applicable or placebo it's maybe true but sometimes if you go in this uh, what the word in um, uh, in English, Malina, Malinik, this, uh, when it's really like tough, uh, this green stuff. You know, yeah, you mean uh, like blackberry bushes with thorns? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It will not really give you any any path there. And the same, it may be uh, some path in the green. Even the runners also thought, okay, I'm going around. So it's maybe also a path in the green. So it's also, it's always a little bit like you never know. Okay, sure, understood. Uh, I understand. Um, the, the the other thing that I want to ask is that uh, you were 34 when you got this medal, and um, you know, in in, in the athletics in general, uh, usually people say that after 30 more or less years old, our physical form starts to decline slowly, and um, I think that the endurance is still there and uh, you know the marathon runners are a perfect example of this because very often even like uh, 35 30 or 40 year, year old uh, marathon runners still can perform on a very highest level so i think the endurance is there we may be i, I say we because i'm like close to this i'm 41 currently right so we may be we start to lack in speed a little bit um, how do you feel, you know, um, even right now as 36 years old? And what is your physical form compared to, for example, when you were 27, 28? Well, it feels like so approximately the same. I, I don't think my physical shape in general is something worse or something. No, it's, it's, it's actually quite good. Even I think that I can uh, do a little bit, as I said, more endurance now. Uh, one thing that I can definitely see that yeah I'm not that fast enough or not not fast as I was or as used to like last time I ran uh, some 400 meters uh, on the track and uh, it was for me now it was 68 seconds around this and it was not a problem to keep those 
and to do many times. Back in the days, it was fine to me run 65 seconds for 400. But then I was I was pushing my my best anyway. It was I was anyway was able to run those sixty five seconds. Nowadays, I try to push even now six or from sixty eight. I got sometimes sixty seven, sixty six. But for sixty five, I probably need to do push even more harder. And it's a little bit like it's not a big difference, but still you can measure, you can see this difference and slightly slower. But yeah, but I can do it more times, so more, more more repetitions. Yeah. More, so yeah. All right, fair enough. So yeah, I, I think I can observe the same, for example, in our Polish ground, that uh, even those older runners that are approaching the end of the senior class, uh, they are still able to like physically at least perform in a very similar level to uh, what they were able to do when they were five, seven years younger. So it kind of makes sense. Uh, so that was the middle distance at World uh, Champs. And uh, actually, the, it's quite a long story about the or great story about this as well. Because we had some kind of training maps, not that many, but maybe three or four. Uh -huh. That was uh, difficult to, was it, no, it was two, was it two, ah, two, uh, two maps mostly relevantly for middle distance, but that was quite difficult to guess um, uh, what it, how it will, how it will look like, because as you can see here, it's two different terrain types, this one mostly with the contours, and this one also with contours, but uh, with uh, cliffs, cliffs almost no any stones uh, yes. and uh, when we check the org map uh, i also thought that we will probably use both because it's quite kind of nice to use at world champs different terrain types and it's of course it's always some nice controls in the white forest some bad in some green areas and this stuff and also uh arena we knew that is going to be here so they need they need somehow to take us to arena mm -hmm. and the question if there will be arena passage or no. So if you need arena passage, if you want to show it, of course it's nice for the public and for TV spectators, then uh, you also need to have not that long course here, but a little bit part of the here as well. Then it will be a little bit shorter here. And also this like uh, mostly I would say running part, uh, because as you can see, it's not that technically demanding. Yes. Of course, it's of course it's still in tune. We need to yeah to pass uh, map to north, but still uh, not that demanding for this part. And uh, yeah, so it was a little bit a challenge to know what's really they use, but it still was um, uh, possible to to guess. And also this part is uh, this one is a new map, and the old map was it was a big map of uh, different maps from different. Uh, years and uh, one was maybe from here. I don't remember. Was it like some nine from nineties or something? So it was uh, difficult to yeah. Of course, you get into to glue how it looks like in the stones, but still, it's nothing really. You, you understand that competition map will looks completely different. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the problem. Well, that's not a problem. It's same for everyone. But what I don't really like or didn't like the quarantine was here for middle. Uh, qualification in the final, it was the same. And uh, here, actually, from the just opposite side of this field, it's, it was one of the training maps, and qualification we ran it was just here. And then uh, for qualification, uh, they gave us, I would say, quite big area for warm up, actually. But all the map, it's all the warm up area of qualification it was one part of the very much more bigger map. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it was not a problem because we got quite big area for the for warming up, but not for the final. So for the final, we actually we got uh, just this piece for warming up, like mm. this piece. So of course, it's maybe for for some runners it doesn't really matter. It's it was enough, but for me it felt quite small. And uh, also that day, uh, maybe I had some you know, some troubles in my head sometimes or something. I just was not in touch with the map. At least not in the beginning. And when I came to this area and was not really understood why he, what the map maker, why he drew this null, how it was, this was, uh, it was possible to understand this uh, 
uh, nose, but why this was like also like a heel, but not like completely heel. And uh, all the things I thought, uh, why he's doing this way? And why, why he was doing this style? So I tried to warm up on this as well, but it's not that many features as you can see here. Yes. So I was not really in touch already in the warm up map. And then uh, I start, and uh, I cannot say that I start to because uh, pre starts always here. And when we start, and I cannot say that um, I was uh, pushing something really hard, but uh, so slow, like some, some issues. Yeah. Um, so for me, as I'm, as I see now, it's nothing exceptional. This uh, first control is just okay. You just go straight, reading those features, reading those details. But uh, at that day, at, the moment, at that moment, I decided, okay, I will not get to the first if I will go straight. I have no idea how to get there. I don't know. It was not with uh, some um, uh, stress to do. It was just I didn't feel that I will. I, I'm in touch with the map. And also one of these issues was already on the training map, which I described it, which was just here. And this terrain, it seems like it's a challenge. It's quite many uh, features here. Uh, they, it seems they're quite distinct. So it's possible to see and the sun without, like if you see from a map, you should be also really able to see them on the terrain. But in reality, for me, it felt like you have here a tree nose, for example, but in mm -hmm. reality, it was possible that maybe there is a five or six nodes. And then you need to understand which one the map maker choose and uh, which on the map and which are not on the map. Yeah. A little bit same in the depression. Those on the map was really big and deep, but still it was possible to have like a tree around depressions as well. And then it was also possible you need to uh understand which are not a map well which on the map which are not on the map anyway so i thought okay is the first one is too difficult for me at the moment at that moment so i decided to go uh, a little bit around like using this yellow and then this a uh, little bit white nose and go down to this bend then coming here and then just go straight from from this point and i already i felt uh, with this task in the beginning so here it was not a problem to have to run. And here I already start to loosen myself. And I thought that I'm going like here somewhere in the depression. And now here, when I go in like kind of around this nose, I thought that I'm going around this nose here. Mm -hmm. so here I came, yes, yeah, so I'm a little bit back GPS here. So I already like on the path here, I thought, okay, I'm in this path. And I saw some bendings here, maybe it was this bend. So I start running uh, this way and was waiting like for a white forest. I tried to see the snow and this, uh, yeah. So the, the, when the green was ending and to see the snow. And as you see here, I was running and it was all, all the time kind of green. And I was a little bit suspicious what, what's happening. It doesn't really make any sense. Where am I then? I hadn't noticed this bend, but then at some point I saw, um, quite far in front of me and I saw a little bit depression and also this uh, this uh, crack. And then mm -hmm. I said, okay, I'm too far. I am the, because I was just reading around this area and I understood I'm too far and now I need to uh, run to toward the control. And also as soon as I went to the forest, even if I know that I was here, that I knew it. Uh, also here, I almost already lost myself and I saw this oh, here, oh, it doesn't make really sense. And then I just like kind of relocate a little bit because this one is, as you see, in five um, meters at a distance, it's quite a big uh, depression here. And then it's uh, it, it makes a little bit, okay, I, I don't know where I'm here. Maybe I was here, maybe here, so just somewhere. I just run it down and then it's okay, I'm, I'm almost at the bottom and then also, uh, here I haven't seen this depression, so I came first somewhere. So I guess yeah, maybe uh, maybe a little bit here, and then I just from from this point that okay, I'm here. Maybe I don't remember. I probably saw this crack, and I came to this depression. So already, uh, it's not showing all the no. 
already to from from the start to first as you can see it was completely like a bad start and I actually I lost almost one and a half or two minutes just to the first control yeah it looks like quite a big mistake yeah yeah but actually here I would not say if you don't know all this like a story or something it, it looks maybe okay when well, maybe one minute or something if you go straight here if you're doing all really fine and doing a little bit here maybe like one minute I think it's possible but it was almost two minutes for me here so um yeah and then uh, i just it just continued that way for me so uh here i just running my hands in this hill but i thought it's uh, some some maybe some other hill maybe the snows and then this hill i decided that it was this one then i just continued down this and then i suddenly understood that i'm like almost at this point so i came i also run a little bit like under this so it's also like maybe some 15 or 20 seconds just on, on quite simple control when you in general you need to go straight over the hill in other, uh, in, in other depression or you just follow your depressions and get uh, to the right so nothing exceptional here so uh, yeah this one also was not bad no no not perfect so far away from from my best and um, uh, even here i was so i was still continue to pushing relevantly fine but try but the, try to have as much as under control as possible but already here uh, also this um, uh, old forest track i when i passed it i was not really sure where i was and here i just tried to read those nose and uh, this rain turned this nose but it was just a disaster i cannot even like explain where i was because i have no idea and at this point uh Emil Svensk, uh, who started two minutes behind me, he caught me here. And it was, as you can see, maybe a little bit on the track. I was slowing down a little bit here, trying to relocate and find myself. And he also came like here, and he had no idea as well as understood because <laughs> we both made this mistake. And uh, here in track, it feels like not really also, it was a mistake, not really big. But in reality, I, I came, I think it was approximately here, because I saw this uh, this this track, mm -hmm. the, I relocated myself. Okay, I should be here. And what was also not that fun, uh, I didn't manage to find myself in the map. I haven't seen this. I didn't notice. I don't know why I didn't notice this um, this hill with the crack. Of course, the crack is slightly behind the hill. Yes, it is seen from this direction. But anyway, I didn't manage to see this hill. Uh, maybe also it was partly from a map now it looks like a little bit green here here otherwise it's kind of white but also it's a July and it's kind of always a little bit green in the forest so you can it's difficult to see those undistinct green areas and uh, so here what's uh, it's not that fun but so I I understand okay I'm somewhere close to this track I don't know where I am I was just here because I can see this track and it's going up. It's not going like a parallel, it's, it's going up. So I'm here, but I was not able to find myself in the map. And then, I, and then I just decided, okay, I should go slightly to the left somehow. And then I just found the control because I, it's, I know it sounds quite fun, especially for elite runner. And uh, well, maybe for even for amateur who's uh, think is that elite runners they always uh, know where they are and they are really doing through good routine but that's no it's not how it is anyway not for me so i can i just found this control it was nothing exceptional but I just found it i saw the flag and then i also like kind of understood a little bit okay it's like partly the game is over for today no any medals no any gold medals nothing will happen uh, really well and then i just like kind of also continue uh, going mostly straight here in the compass, and then I decide okay, I go here, and then I will use this yellow, this, um, and come to the compass. And yeah, that actually works quite well. Uh, I don't think the track was actually accurate here because I run on the yellow here, and uh, yeah, all the way until and in between uh, mm -hmm. this post and this hill. So I came to my um, depression. Next one, fifth. Uh, well, so actually, in this case, it's not that much to see in the split times uh, because most of the mistakes I did myself. 
here it may be it's I'm a little bit useful but when you just uh, when you just go to get to know how much you lost here if you're good up here or not what, what did you learn from those first controls uh mean in, in terms of uh, at that special at this specific moment for the rest of the course or you mean like now when I'm seeing this uh, course and good question I, I mean both so first of all, did you draw any conclusions after those, those first controls to like um, adjust and uh, be better during the rest of the course? And also, what, what did you learn for the future for the, for the other courses? Uh, well, for, for this course, maybe I would not say that I learned, but I understood, okay, it's, it's maybe a little bit sounds similar to 2018. And I understood no medals take it easy just run your course it's well, then it doesn't matter because it's i was also hoping that i will get get for the medal or go for the medal and then so, and i i understood that it will not happen this day so just took it a little bit easy and perform as good as you can but um, yeah focus mostly on orienteering so i would not say that i maybe learned something but just took it easy rest of the course uh in both in terms of physical and maybe more calm and technical side and uh, regarding to to nowadays what i learned from this course it's actually a bit difficult to say it well of course you none, probably nothing maybe new that uh one of the things i should point is you should never underestimate uh, a course especially at work but i would say here in the beginning uh, that you should not underestimate that first control will be easy or maybe simple. That this one is it's quite difficult to to find. It's quite difficult technically, and we actually run on um, uh, on a couple of trainings. Um, also, quite difficult first ex exceptional first controls when straight from the start you just they drop you just in the middle of nowhere mm -hmm. and somehow to have to find it. And that was, uh, I also, I did not make such, such a big mistake. But then when we analyzed with um, the coach uh, whom I'm using for, an ally, for, for a theory, and he also said that uh, even this day, I talked to him just before in the morning, and he said, all, all what you need to, like, from the start, just try to find the first trap together without any mistakes. You don't need to push from the start because first will be just exceptionally difficult. And he said this. Uh, he was he said it basically basically on um, knowledge from the trainings uh, we run before, and that's how it happened actually. That's how it was. So uh, and I, as you can see here, I didn't manage to execute it well. So I was quite bad pupil. I would say. Yeah, but but I think yeah. your 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 idea was very cautious, right? You, you didn't go straight. You actually nope, nope. used the path exactly. at the beginning, so you, you were trying to be very careful, but you didn't yep. execute it well enough. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, that's true. I didn't execute it well enough. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, but from from now, I would, I would not say that I maybe I cannot draw the conclusion, but I learned something except from from this beginning that the, uh, for my future, I would say. Sometimes you have this feeling, it was also a little bit similar in the world champs in um, Estonia 2017 in middle mm -hmm. distance and relay. When you have a map, and here you have a map, you understand that map is from like a basic knowledge that it's a high level event. So the map will be with a big probability, the map will be exceptionally good and really precise and up to date. And the mapper is probably one of the best who made those maps. And uh, nowadays, it's all the maps are made with uh, LiDAR data. So mm -hmm. it's really accurate. So you have a really good map, but still, you have this feeling that the map doesn't give any sense. It doesn't make any sense of the terrain. And it's quite difficult to get. Yeah, I know. It's, that's how it is. I have a map in hand. I watch and I look in the terrain around. I cannot understand. I don't see those features which on the map. And why it's happened, I don't really have any proper uh, proper answer. I don't know. So some maybe I learned something for the future that you should not uh, underestimate the courses and maps, and uh, but still it's maybe really 
to something very really different. Uh, uh, yeah, so what, what do you expect? Uh, yeah, we can come back to the course. Mm -hmm. Or five, that's actually quite interesting lack uh, in terms of uh, pro choice. Uh, when I see this now, I don't, uh, still, I don't really see how it will probably execute it really well. I see maybe like one mostly straight first part, yeah. and then coming here, and then here is a question, or you want to go uh, um, over the hill, or you want to go slightly around and coming from this part, but it's a bit more tricky uh, because it's not that many features when you approach the control. Or you can go to this road here, and then you can also, or you like, jump here and maybe to the green, or you go here a little bit around, or you go all the way around. And uh, this is a good road choice, uh, this is a good leg. So I, I was not able to decide it uh, that day at the control. And I am actually, I cannot decide it now either. Uh, so I decided to go around here and then on the path and on the path here all the way, and that was quite quite fine. But still, I lost. Uh, yeah, we can go slightly a bit in the time. I lost some time uh, here in the beginning because I was not from the, from a control. You have to go straight to this road. I wasn't. I, I tried. I started run a little bit on the forest, so that was not really necessary. And then I lost time here, actually. It was not that easy. Uh, no, it's actually a little bit strange. I think, no, no, I had something, something back with GPS. Anyway, I lost my time here because I got like kind of this, but I lost myself here because it was quite many other like a paths or forest tracks. And it was difficult anyway for me mm -hmm. uh, to get there. Yeah, and then after after fifth control, that was not uh, a big deal with um, uh, with Orientine anymore. I don't know. Well, maybe it's what what the difference what we can see here compared. This is more green. This is much more white. Mm -hmm. And it was actually really nice and open forest here. So Orientine, it was not exceptional bad, but uh, my six seven was not the, the, the good either. Even if you can see here. Uh, that it's uh, kind of looks like I'm having it under control, but I lost a little bit myself here, and then I came, uh, yeah, when I came like here and here, then oh, I'm just here, so I was not any big mistake, but I lost also myself a little bit in this area. So the rest of the course went actually, uh, I don't remember, I think just uh, the GPS, as you can see, quite accurate today, uh, that day. Uh, to the 13, that was also a little bit of challenge. Uh, here, I would say, if you're if you're a good technical runner, you can of course go around, but you need to be really careful here. And I went around, but I was kind of tired, and I haven't decided to go. That's why I haven't decided to go straight. Otherwise, quite good road choice. You just go this uh, reentrant. Most of it's like the biggest part of the hill. Then you go this follow the snow, snows, and then to control, and then this one is like a double check for you that okay, yeah. you're the right place. So it's really good road choice. You just go straight if you if you feel physical. Otherwise, you can also go around, but only in case you're sure that you can read those details. And actually, I lost myself here on the way to 13, somewhere here already. Uh, I thought, yes, right. I thought to use this um, this cracks, this cliffs here. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then I just, yeah, I, it was fine in the beginning, but then I just lost myself while approaching the control. And suddenly, somehow, also, I just, I would say, found it because, of course, I knew that I'm somewhere in this area, but it was a little bit of luck as well. I haven't seen those cracks here. Maybe I saw the hills. I don't really remember. I, yeah, I have analysis on Russian language, but I don't think I actually I did went through all the course because it was a little bit lack of time. Anyway. How, how often does it happen that you uh, run, you, you're like, you know, you're close to the control, but you don't see it. And then you get a little bit lucky and you hit the control. Actually, really seldom. I, at the moment, maybe it was uh, common for me, more common when I was a youngster. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, I, it's maybe something with age came, maybe with this uh, coach whom I use, uh, technical guy. 
uh, he's always pushing me to be really accurate if I'm tuning. Yeah. So maybe that's why I change. But nowadays, it's I always I all I would say I'm reading. Uh, I try to read all all the things which I need to be sure that I will get to the control. Yeah. So all the stuff what I need to to see and what's around the line plus minus two two millimeters. I I almost almost everything I see. I would say. Good, good. I'm happy to hear it because uh, I, I would assume that um, the, the top level athletes basically have almost full control over everything that's going on. Obviously, this map was very detailed and it was easy to get lost over here because there aren't that many very visible and distinctive features. So uh, I completely understand that this was a challenge and you either have to be uh, very fast at reading a lot of details or accustomed to the um, mapping style of the person that made the map as well. Yeah. Uh, as you said, this will always help and you, you didn't feel very comfortable in this area yeah. this day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but, but in general, um, th this map, I think, will, sh should be a little bit challenging simply because of so many different uh, and small elements that are yeah. available. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, I'm full agree with you. Yeah, that's true. And actually, just want to mention, as I said, one map was just here for the trainings, another was was here. Uh -huh. I almost never was in a good touch with map maker in this terrain. So maybe it was just for me, maybe for the other runners as well. Even I understand this map makers did a really great job with mapping mapping this terrain with generalization and not overall overloading this map. But uh, yeah, I never got in touch, even if. I, I was living also here almost one month and training almost one month all those maps before the world champs. Still, I was not, uh, I hadn't, I had not it under my control. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's actually most, most of the things I already told. And yeah, so and the rest of the course went quite fine, nothing exceptional, but yeah. No any big mistakes from my side, at least here. It was a little bit maybe road chase here, but it was mostly nothing exceptional, I would say, the last part from after the like 14. Cool. I think I think this is very interesting. Like yeah. uh you do you definitely had a pretty like when you're thinking about a person that is supposed to compete for the medal positions, yeah. there was a this was a very bad start to the race. Definitely. Yeah, very yeah. bad start, right? You you yeah. made uh simply to the first control, you made like uh probably a little yeah. bit less than two minutes maybe one and a half yeah, minutes and then yeah. yeah yeah and then another mistake on this on the second another mistake yeah. on the third um yeah. a, a bigger one again probably half a minute at least right more, and, more and, close and, close and, close and then close. you're like suddenly yeah. getting caught by another runner which is uh, as you mentioned a good sign for the person that caught you but not a great sign for you <laughs> for the no, rest of the no, course that's true. yeah that's true yeah. um and and even even from this bad start, um, the if you we, if you were still able to uh, reach for for the for the third spot during the race, it kind of shows how difficult this terrain was for everybody. Mm -hmm. And I think like probably no runner was able to get a clean race uh, in this kind of a terrain. Yeah, probably no one except Matthias. <laughs> he won with those two and a half or how many minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, you said that he he had a. Oh, oh yes, yes. He did. He yes. Yeah, you're right. He had he had a big advantage. I, I was thinking about a different race. Yes. Yeah. So you know, good job to Matthias. Uh, but yes. it's uh, it's like. You know, don't don't give up even after the ba a bad start. I think this is this is the lesson I'm kind of getting from from today's talk. Like both of the medals, I see the pattern. You know, you're having not a great start at the beginning, but then you're like, okay, screw this race. I'm just going to have fun and uh, do whatever yeah. I can for the remaining part of it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But yeah, but maybe you misunderstood. This one, this was not a medal for me. Oh, you're right. This one was not a medal. No, no. You're right. I, I, I don't know why I thought that we we're talking about 2021. You're right. No, no, it's this year, 2023. No, no, it's this year. What, what yeah, place did you get here? I was 13. I think 13. It was, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Of course, we can talk about uh, Czech third place as well, but it was nothing exceptional there. It was no mistakes or no big mistakes at all. There, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, I, I don't know. Somehow it got mixed in my head. No, no. All right. I think like, you know, uh, time-wise, I think that uh, I don't want to take any more of your time. This has been definitely a very interesting talk. Um, of course, huge congratulations for your performances, your results, your medals, uh, especially those during the World Orienteering Champs. I think that this is uh, amazing that um, runners from non-Scandinavian countries, not non, you know, top orienteering countries are able to reach for those spots. Similarly, like um, the Austria this year yeah. during, uh, during World Orienteering Champs and then World Cup as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, so exactly. I, I'm always happy to, to see this because, you know, that gives me hope that there is a place for Poland somewhere over there at, as well sometime in the future. And I will definitely be hoping. Uh, I thank you very much for the time. Uh, I'm sure that people watching will be able to uh, learn something from our discussion and draw their own conclusions and maybe improve in, the, in terms of their orienteering and maybe also get to know you a little bit more uh, thanks to everything you've shared today. So thank you so much for your time. And yeah, uh, hopefully we will be able to hear or see each other sometime in the future. Yeah, definitely. I hope so. Thank you very much for too. Good luck during the orienteering champs, European yeah. orienteering champs. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.